let us again consider the function g that appeared in the first part of the lecture. g of x is given by the expression 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. By considering functional values of g for points x very, very close to 1, and by looking at the graph of g, we learned that the limit of g of x as x tends to 1 is equal to 2. Now, can we obtain this conclusion computationally? For example, we know that the numerator and the denominator being polynomials, their limits as x tends to 1 exist. So, can we instead divide the limit of the numerator by the limit of the denominator as x tends to 1 to obtain the limit of g as x tends to 1? Let us see. The numerator, 3x squared minus 4x plus 1, has the limit equal to 0 as x tends to 1. We can see this by plugging in 1 to the polynomial 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Likewise, the denominator x minus 1 has the limit 0 as x tends to 1. We can easily see this by plugging in 1 to x minus 1. So we see that we cannot simply divide the limit of the numerator by the limit of the denominator to obtain the desired conclusion. Instead, what we can do is to recognize that the numerator 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 is factorable and it can be expressed as the product of the linear factors 3x minus 1 and x minus 1. So x minus 1 appears in the numerator and in the denominator. So when x is not equal to 1, we can cancel this x minus 1 in the numerator and this x minus 1 in the denominator. And so we get 3x minus 1. Now since we are taking the limit as x tends to 1, we are not interested at the x value equal to 1. And so, in evaluating the limit of the expression 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by x minus 1, as x tends to 1, we can instead consider the expression 3x minus 1 and take the limit of this polynomial instead. So, let us compute the limit of 3x minus 1 as x tends to 1. Plugging in 1 to 3x minus 1, we get 2, which is the desired limit. Now, let us generalize this solution to rational expressions where the limit of the numerator is equal to 0 and the limit of the denominator is also equal to 0. We have the following definition first. So suppose that the limit of your function f of x as x tends to a is equal to 0. And likewise, the limit of your function g as x tends to a is also 0. Then, the limit of the quotient f of x divided by g of x as x tends to a is called an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. Now, before we proceed to some illustrations, let us note of the following remarks. If f evaluated at a is equal to 0 and g evaluated at a is also 0, then the fraction f over a, or rather f of a divided by g of a, is undefined. Next, this limit here, the limit of f of x over g of x as x tends to a, may or may not exist. When it exists, how do we evaluate the limit? As we have seen before, we can use the technique of factoring in evaluating limits of indeterminate form 
And also, we can apply rationalization. So let us now look at some examples. First, let us look at this function here given by x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials. And let us obtain the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator as x approaches negative 1. So all we need to do is to plug in negative 1 to the expressions. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1 will give us 0. So the limit of the numerator is 0. Now, the denominator is x plus 1. So when we plug in negative 1 to x, we also get 0. So this limit is an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0. Now, what do we do? Clearly, the numerator is factorable. In fact, it is a perfect square. So, x squared plus 2x plus 1 is the same as x plus 1 quantity square. So, x plus 1 is a common factor of the numerator and the denominator. Let us divide the numerator x plus 1 squared by x plus 1. So we get x plus 1. So to get the limit of the given expression, we may take the limit of x plus 1 as x tends to negative 1. And so plugging in negative 1 to x, you will get negative 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0. As the next example, let us consider the rational expression x cubed plus 8 divided by x squared minus 4. You can check that the limit of the numerator as x tends to negative 2 and the limit of the denominator as x tends to negative 2 are both 0. But note that the numerator is a sum of two cubes. And the denominator is a difference of two squares. So we can factor the numerator and the denominator. x cubed plus 8 is equal to x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. The denominator, meanwhile, can be expressed as x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we can factor out x plus 2. So we remove x plus 2 in the numerator and x plus 2 in the denominator. And so we will get the limit of this new rational expression, x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by x minus 2. Now, let us compute the limit of this rational expression. So let us plug in negative 2 to x. So we get 4 plus 4 plus 4 divided by negative 2 minus 2, or the denominator is negative 4. So we obtained negative 3 as the limit of the expression x cubed plus 8 divided by x squared minus 4 as x tends to negative 2. Now, for the next example, the given function is x squared minus 16 divided by 2 minus square root of x. And we want to take the limit of this function as x tends to 4. Again, you can check that the limit is of type 0 over 0. Now, what can we do here? Okay, observe that the numerator is factorable. You can write it as x minus 4 times x plus 4 because x squared minus 16 is a difference of two squares, and those squares are the square of x and the square of 4. How about the denominator? What can we do to the denominator? Well, you've seen this technique in your algebra course. You can multiply 2 minus square root of x by 2 plus square root of x. 
And why do we want to do this? So actually, when you multiply 2 minus square root of x by 2 plus x, by, by 2 plus square root of x rather, what you need to do is you need to square 2, and so you will get 4. And you also need to square the square root of x, which will give you x. And so the denominator becomes 4 minus x. Now, again, let us go back to the numerator, x squared minus 16. Since we multiply the denominator by 2 plus square root of x, we are obligated to multiply the numerator x squared minus 16 by the same expression 2 plus square root of x. So we obtain this line. However, as I've noted before, x squared minus 16 is factorable. It factors as x minus 4 times x plus 4. So we see that we have an x minus 4 in the numerator and a 4 minus x in the denominator. And so if I divide x minus 4 by 4 minus x, what will I get is negative 1. And so if I divide this numerator by 4 minus x, the quotient will be negative of x plus 4 times 2 plus square root of x. And to obtain the limit of this expression, all I need to do is to plug in 4 to x. And so I will get negative 8 times 4, which will give me negative 32. So the limit of this expression here, as x tends to 4, is equal to negative 32. And finally, let us look at this polynomial, or rather this function, given by the quotient of the cube root of x minus 2, divided by the polynomial x squared minus 7x minus 8. So when you take the limit of the denominator, you see that you will get 0. Also, if you get the limit of the numerator as x tends to 8, you will get 0. Now, a little note. Since the limit of the denominator of this polynomial denominator is equal to 0, that means that this denominator x squared minus 7x minus 8 is divisible by x minus 8. So this quadratic is factorable. And in fact, the factors are x minus 8 and x plus 1. Okay? Now, what? how, how do we evaluate this limit? Alright? The problem seems to be rooting from the numerator, the cube root of x minus 2. What can we do to the cube root of x minus 2? Well, we can multiply it to the number, to the expression, cube root of x squared plus 2 times cube root of x plus 4. And if we multiply this expression, the cube root of x minus 2, by the cube root of x squared plus 2 times the cube root of x plus 4, we will get, in fact, x minus 8. Now, how do we obtain this expression here? Okay, you've learned this from your algebra course. So, x minus 8, we must view, view this as a difference of two cubes. x being the cube of the cube root of x, and 8 being the cube of 2. And so, we can factor x minus 8 as the cube root of x minus 2 times, we need to square this quantity, so we will have the cube root of x squared, and then reverse the sign, so we will have the plus sign instead of the minus sign here. So plus this quantity times this one, so 2 times the cube root of x. And finally, we need to square this quantity here, which is 2, and the square is 4. And so again, if we multiply this quantity by this quantity, we will get x minus 8. Now for the denominator, as I've already mentioned, x squared minus 7x minus 8 is factorable by x minus 8 times x plus 1. And since we multiply the numerator by this expression, we also have to multiply the denominator by the same expression. And so finally, we will have this expression here, this new rational expression, and we see that x minus 8 is a common factor of 
the numerator and the denominator. So we can cancel out x minus 8. And when we do that, we will get the expression 1 divided by x plus 1 times the cube root of x squared plus 2 times the cube root of x plus 4. And to get the limit of this expression, as x tends to 8, we just need to plug in 8 to x. And so we have 1 divided by 9 times 4 plus 4 plus 4. Or 1 divided by 108. So the limit of this expression is equal to 1 over 108. So this is the last example for this lecture. Let us now move on to the suggested exercise items. So for the first exercise item, evaluate the limit of 3x minus 12 divided by 3 minus the square root of 2x plus 1 as x tends to 4. And for the second exercise item, find the limit of the function f as x tends to negative 1, where the function f is given by the rational expression x cubed minus 3x minus 2 divided by x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. The lecture ends here.